Welcome to the Upland Nation podcast. I'm Scott Linden, your host, also the host of the television show Wing Shooting USA. Hope you watch that. These days you can watch it on about 200 local television stations, among other places. Uh, we have got an interesting and uh, I hope constructive take on this whole shelter in place coronavirus panic that is, uh, I guess, taken over here in the United States. Uh, I asked on some Facebook pages uh, a few questions. I'll elaborate on those in a minute. But we're going to make the most of your house arrest and help you continue to develop your dog's skills and talents to their maximum right here on the Upland Nation podcast. Coming to you from the Cabela's, Cabela's, you know, I said it right, Cabela's podcast studio. We're outfitted by Cabela's wearing a shirt and pants from them right now. There will also be, of course, the usual stuff, some public access advice, a hunting strategy or dog handling tip, and some adventures, including from your own phone calls. Just back from a long walk with my dog, Flick, on some adjacent BLM ground to my house that is not closed yet. I'll talk more about that in a few minutes as well. We are working on two things, force braking and steadiness to wing shot and fall. And boy, oh boy, is he coming right along. I hope you're making progress with your dog at the same time. That's part of the question that we will get to in just a few moments. Uh, first, sageandbreaker.com is one of my sponsors. Sage and Breaker Mercantile is the official name of the company, but you find them at sageandbreaker.com. I told you their gun mats, both for long guns and for uh, handguns, are are ready to pre-order. They did sell out. They've got them in the pipeline. It's just a matter of time. If you'd like to order your own high quality, yeah, the best, um, what would we call it? The highest caliber gun cleaning and gun care products uh, go to sageandbreaker.com. And there is a sale on at Dogtra.com right now. Dogtra.com is where you learn more about the TNB dual training collar. Got a little of everything and some things you do not need. You have two sets of buttons so you can control two dogs, two collars with one hand and you don't have to poke around or toggle on a screen or anything like that. You can save yourself a little money by using the code SLUN10 on any purchase over 200 bucks. You'll get 10% off. All right. So here we are in the midst of what I consider to be a just kind of a, uh, I'm sorry to say it this way because I don't mean to sound callous. I know people who have it and I know people who will probably get it and either you or me or one of your friends may as well, but it is to a degree a tempest in a teapot. This coronavirus thing is, uh, is um, frankly, a little overblown in my book, but um, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about all the things that matter to you, your dog, your hunting, your training uh, during this time of, um, well, unusual circumstance. Let's call it that. If you don't know by now, some folks in some states are actually putting the hammer down and closing public ground. On a local basis, uh, it may or may not have affected you yet, but it will. Pennsylvania is one of the most recent places to close a state park system. We're seeing more of that on a um, on a broader basis with uh, properties administered by public land management agencies that are not state parks per se. Keep your eyes peeled. The last thing you want to do is get caught trespassing on land that you and me and everybody else here owns. So double check wherever you're going there. No more news on the zootic. I think that's the term we want to use, the zootic potential, either passing this disease to your dog or your dog passing it to you. Practice good hygiene no matter what you're doing. It's always smart to wash your hands after every touching incident, whether it's a dog, a human, or some of that stuff in the grocery store that's been pawed over. Pardon the pun. So watch out for that supply chain issues yeah there will be some there is no doubt about it since we last talked a few days ago Benelli has responded to a question I had for them you know being made in the hot zone of Italy our Benelli shotguns are going to be in short supply very soon and they have assured us that they have about a two-month 
backlog of inventory in the pipeline right now. Now, whether that means things will get better or worse, we'll have to find out. But right now, there will most likely be some shipping delays, uh, mandatory government stoppages in Italy beyond their control is what they tell us. And that will affect deliveries in the long term, but no immediate threat. Likewise, they assure us that the likelihood of any germs, if you will, any pathogens coming across from Italy on a shotgun are, are pretty silly. I mean, the stuff does, I mean, I've seen some research. The stuff will survive on non-porous surfaces like plastic and metal, but over the course of a long sea voyage in a container, probably not. You know what to do about that. Wash your hands, wash your gun. Not in the washing machine, okay? All right, good enough. All right, let's get down to some of the fun stuff here because we've need we've needed to kind of lighten things up for a while, and I hope you are doing that on a on an individual basis in your own household. So I asked the question on Facebook: What are you doing since you can't uh, do much else? You know this whole shelter in place thing, which is a real rule a law in some communities and it is a recommendation in many jake coon says i have 42 acres and over 50 animals i'm not going to be bored on top of that he says he's training dogs and it's calving season jake i don't miss that at all you can have it long nights oh did i say cold nights and lots of other interesting things uh, coming uh, together if you are out there. And if you are, good luck, whether it's calves or lambs or anything else along those lines, good luck. And before we get to the phones, just a great little uh, nugget of information. Uh, you know, uh, we're all focused on COVID-19 right now, but we got to remember that in my second favorite city, Nashville, there was a tragic uh, situation with a tornado or two or five a while back uh, something neat on uh, Facebook and within our community Jared Biddle J-A-R-R-O-D B-I-D-D-L-E and I tell you that because he's making you an offer you cannot refuse he's quite the artist beautiful drawings of Britney's and uh, looks like a couple um, pointers and some quail and farm machinery some just great bird hunting prints that he is going to offer up for sale and then donate all the proceeds to nashville tornado victims so if you want to learn more about jared's work and also his offer look him up on facebook jared j-a-r-r-o-d biddle b-i-d-d-l-e some incredible work there and going towards a good cause and only 35 bucks a piece a special pricing of multiples if you want to really lay it out for somebody down there in nash vegas they would sure appreciate it all right so let's get to the phones i'll give you jared's uh information one more time later but on the phone with me now john where are you calling from john I'm up in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Okay, so how much snow you have left? <laughs> uh, well, unfortunately, we just got hit with four inches last night, but prior to that, we were on a good melt off. Well, good, and I hope it melts fast. Uh, you guys have been hammered the last few years. I remember coming through your country last fall, and, and there were still lakes in the middle of cornfields that weren't harvested. I hope you don't have to deal with that anymore. Uh, unfortunately, there's still some standing crops, but that makes good numbers for the birds that survive, you know, through the winter. Well, that's, you know, uh, thank you, because there is one more bright spot to that whole situation there. And for this podcast in particular, we're trying to figure out how we can turn lemons into lemonade with this whole COVID-19 coronavirus shelter in place, which I call house arrest because it's only a matter of time before it becomes that. John, um, what kind of dogs are you running? I run uh, two Deutsch Drahtars. Oh, you guys are at a hotbed up there for uh, Deutsch Drahtars. Are you, are you um, hunting them with waterfowl as well as with upland birds? Correct, and we also try to run in some uh, some blood tracking now that we had just passed the passed the law this last year with 
being able to use dogs on big game blood tracking. Nice. Um, do you have to keep them on a long lead for that up there in North Dakota? Correct. We do. Yeah. Well, good on you. And, and I'm sure there are some big game hunters out there who will appreciate it next fall. So glad to hear it. How was your hunting season last uh, fall, by the way? Oh, it was all right. Uh, we could have had a better one. Like you said, we got a little affected with, uh, a really late season blizzard and a lot of standing water and the farmers having a tough time getting crops off. So more crops that are standing, the more places for birds to hide. Yeah. Well, I sure like that. And I'll remember that when I'm headed your way, I'm hoping to make it up there this year. So thanks a lot uh, for the encouragement. Now, uh, here we are in some communities, you are literally breaking the law by going out and trying to run your dog on public ground. In others, uh, it's frowned upon almost like selling plywood during a hurricane. What are you doing up there, John? Are you facing any of that? Um, it's just starting to hit here now. As of, unfortunately, as of this morning, I just got laid off from my job. I work in the uh, the service industry, which I'm a cook. Yeah. So, so we've been taking some hits there, but, uh, you know, we gotta, we gotta play the safe as we can. Yeah. And, uh, you have my sympathy. Uh, I have a good, a lot of good friends in this, in the, in the food service business and they're all twiddling their thumbs at home as well. It is, um, it is part of the order here. And by order, that means the governor with one stroke of her pen has turned it into law uh, they are only open for takeout and um, a delivery service, which means most of them are, you know, laying everybody off. Uh, well, good luck on that, and I hope it doesn't last too long because uh, that can be devastating. So what are you doing with your dogs in the meanwhile? Well, I just had uh, my first litter of Deutsch Drahars this past spring, so I got my hands full with a puppy, and as of right now, I'm just working on uh, horse fetching, some recall, a lot of the basics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, um, what it, it, you're testing in the VDDNA, I presume. Um, what are the biggest challenges with a young dog for uh, for that testing program? That's, by the way, for everybody else. That's the Ger that's the American branch of the German club for the Deutsche Drahtar, which uh, translated means German wire hair. If you really care about those things, so John, what are you doing that that really is going to take most of your effort? Uh, I'm working on bringing out a lot of her nose. So I'm doing some rabbit tracks. Some duck trap or some duck drags. Um, this first test is based on a lot of puppy skills. Yeah. So it's seeing what the pup is, you know, like what what attributes does it this dog have naturally? Sure. Yeah. So nose uh, drive, if you will. Um, drive. Maybe use of wind or something like that. Um, a lot of cooperation and sure. obedience, yeah. and then uh, the pointing, of course, is in there as well, with it being a pointing breed. Are you able to work with live birds? Do you have your own collection of birds out there to work with? I don't have my own collection, but I do have access to a handful of uh, grain silos that I can go and get some pigeons at. Nice. And then up there, I tell you, uh, tell us, tell us all about this. Uh, I think you can train on wild birds on some of that prairie ground, uh, almost all season. Am I right on that? Yes, you are correct. Um, where it comes to limitations for training on wild birds around here, it would be on uh, state or government regulated land. And they just don't want you out there when the birds would be nesting got it well it sounds like you got your hands full with a puppy on uh on uh on the dock for uh for this year's testing season good luck on that and um and on the employment situation let's all keep our fingers crossed for everybody particularly in the food service industry which has been just hammered so john good luck to you thanks for being on the upland nation podcast i appreciate it have a good night 
And as our Facebook friend Terrence Chesney says, putting more birds under your puppy's nose is never a bad thing. So if you can find uh, silo pigeons or underpass pigeons or overpass pigeons or something like that to work on, or if you have access to real game birds, all the better. Keep up the good work, John, and uh, hope you're back at work real soon. You know, there are more than one or two people I talk to on a fairly regular basis who have dusted off their calls and uh, also uh, looked up uh, look, looked up all of their camo clothing, and some of it actually still fits. And what are they doing? They're going to start a little turkey hunting. Now, you talk about uh, social distancing. If you're not far enough away from everybody else when you're turkey hunting, then you're not really turkey hunting. So, you know, there's another one to add to your list. If you're looking for things to do, well, you can't go to the tavern or to the dog club or to the Pheasants Forever Banquet or anything like that. So, uh, you know, start making a list, check it twice. I'll try and come up with a couple other ideas down the road as well. And on the line from sunny, sunny California, that's as far as I go. I was going to say sunny Southern California, but Matt, I don't think you're down that far, are you? No, I'm in the Bay Area. Yeah. Well, so you <laughs> Wait, are, I shouldn't oh, admit cripes. that. <laughs> no, 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 it's all right. Yeah, yeah, you have our sympathy right about now. Thank you. <laughs> you. You guys are literally sheltering in place, and I think down there it's as good as law, isn't it? Uh, pretty much. Yeah. I, uh, I'm a general contractor, so I do get to work Oh, good, good. and stuff. And my wife actually works at Safeway, so she has to work too. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, so she's, she's your main man when it comes to your toilet paper supply. <laughs> well, not really. They, they're pretty much out of it every day too. So, <laughs> okay. So, you know, I'm glad I brought that up actually, because I'm going to give everybody a tip. If you haven't figured it out yet, mm. I'm a little bit slow on the uptake and I, I refuse to, to fall for the panic, but, um, on orders from headquarters across the driveway at the boss's house, mm. I was told to go to the grocery store this morning and pick up all the stuff that we usually get in the afternoon. And sure enough, there was plenty of TP on the shelves yeah. in the morning. So, uh, yes. so go then if you need to. Exactly. Uh, pardon the pun. <laughs> <laughs> I just told my wife, I'll bring the, I'll bring the garden hose in with the, uh, you know, the sprayer on it. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We'll make do with it. <laughs> yeah. That's a, the, um, um, the, the rednecks, Bidet. Bidet. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, tell me, I mean, now I'm just curious enough because, uh, you know, we're out there and, you know, it wasn't like the, the place was all panicky and everything, but there were a lot of people in the grocery store. And then I was down the street at getting a pigeon, getting a bag of pigeon feed recently. You know, ev everybody's just going about their business. Is that, are you seeing that as well, Matt? Um, not, not so much. Here. Well, in the Bay area, everybody's panicking, buying yeah. everything. And I actually had to get dog food. I ordered dog food on, you know, over online one yeah. night. Yeah. And I get the email later going, it's going to be five to eight days. I'm like, Ooh, I better see if what I can get. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I ended up buying just a 27 pound bag to get me through another couple of weeks and you know, nothing. I didn't want to go overboard. Didn't, you know? Yep. And, yep. uh, Traffic in the Bay Area is awesome right now. Oh, <laughs> oh I bet. And, and you among few can appreciate it. Oh, God. That. Wow. Uh, a 45 yeah. minute drive now are usually is like 20. <laughs> yeah. I remember some of those East Bay freeways, even when I was uh, living and working in that country. And man, you, 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 you couldn't pay me to go back, except maybe this week. Uh, well, I know I would stay away too. It's still yeah. not worth it. Yeah, that's for <laughs> sure. All right. So, you know, we're yeah, the, the talk here at the Umplin Nation podcast, by the way, I'm Scott Linden, the host. That's Matt over there in the Bay Area of California. Um, the talk is, all right, so here we are kind of stuck, whether we're mandated stuck or just voluntarily stuck is, is academic, I guess. Uh, you had a pretty good suggestion or two. Why don't you tell us what, what, what you might suggest we do in these days of uh, restrictions? Well, I like to go blow off steam and go shoot trap for a while because that's always relaxing and fun to do. And then throw the training dummy for the dog. Yeah, you you yeah. got you got a special one there too, I think. Yes, and that was a shameful <laughs> plug. I just had yeah. to point it out there. But yeah. you know what? I think that's really what got my dog into fetching 
because I started him out at about four months with that. Yeah. And he would bring it by the strap, the wing, whatever he could carry. And <laughs> yep, I love it. You know, I, I like to, by the way, everybody, we're talking about that real bird bumper that I designed a few years back. I like the fact that, and maybe I should take credit for offering several things for several sized puppy mouths to grab onto. Um, exactly. <laughs> well, that's good. And I'm glad to hear it. But you, you know, you bring up something that's near and dear to my heart and that is, uh, making noise and breaking stuff. And, uh, in, in terms of relieving stress, uh, you know, clay targets are probably as legitimate a reason or a legitimate way to do that as anything else. How far do you have to go out there to, to find, uh, you know, something to shoot at? I mean, is, do you uh, have something well, clay, nearby for clay pigeons? I'm actually really lucky. I have a, a um, a club that's like five minutes from my house. Wow. One of the, and the next one's like 15 minutes away for right now. They haven't closed these down. Yeah. Um, they've closed a lot of our ranges down due to the lead. You know, they go, oh, yeah. you need to yeah. clean up the lead. And then as soon as they close it down to clean up the lead, they're like, yeah, we're not going to give you a license to reopen. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we're it's getting scarce around here, but it's real nice that I can get off work real quick and go, come on, boy, let's go shoot some clays. <laughs> and yeah run up there that's you know as 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 the facebook post of the um the smoke coming out of the breach says oh. ar aromatherapy oh exactly well, <laughs> exactly well good for you and i you know it, yeah we lived through the same thing in fact um my favorite trap range it had been in the same place out of town if you will since 1933 i think um now it's a housing subdivision and a elementary school um, yeah but they went through the same drill it's a, you know it's just crazy what's happening out there oh yeah no it's it's getting it california's getting hard to do anything almost anymore um i you know everything i like to do they're trying to get rid of <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. do off-roading i have a jeep i go snowmobiling i hunt you know and and yeah. it's like, really, why are you guys against me? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't take it personally because uh, one of my best friends lives down in that country and we're, you know, every week we're commiserating about one thing or another. Hey, Hey, give us a, uh, just, just give us a reality check on this kind of stuff. Everybody else listening right now, just, uh, re you don't know how good you have it, Matt, what do you have to do to buy ammo? Actually, it's not that hard now good. because I do have my, um, my, real id but before i got that i bought my last gun four years ago so i was in the system so i was able to buy anything okay you so, know i wanted to so you have to but but for some of us that means you have to get in the system which means applying for some sort of a permit, exactly. right exactly that's just and, crazy and see like my brother he um he hasn't bought you know he hasn't bought a gun and no, oh, I don't even remember. And then uh, he hasn't gotten his real ID yet and everything. So it's, you know, he's like going, hmm, how am I going to do this? And we won't go any farther than that. <laughs> yeah, it gets to be a mess. And, and just for those of you in California, as my friend learned the hard way, um, you got to apply for that. And then you got to, uh, I think, actually conduct a transaction within a short amount of time, maybe 30 days. Or you have to yeah. apply and pay again. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's what it There's so many rules and it's like, got so confusing i just finally started calling the sporting goods store and say what do i need to do to buy ammo <laughs> and well, the first thing they said is if you bought a gun in the last five years you're okay and i'm like perfect but i still when i went down i took my receipt and everything good to show you know but it was they did you know it went through no problem well, good for you, and I'm glad to hear it. It's, it's one of the few things that we can do to to maintain our sanity these days. Oh. And then, and now hunting season's over, and that's you know that's the bad that's the bad thing. Now it's we don't even get to go play anymore right now. <laughs> oh, okay. So as a public service, you know, and I did this years ago, and I uh, and I I didn't realize at the time how dumb it was, but I'm glad I did it. And 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 FYI, there are others who will not do it. That is, I put up virtually every episode of Wing Shooting USA, my TV show, on YouTube. Now it may not be in high def or 4K or whatever 5K it is now. 
but it is um, at least you could watch it if you need a fix real bad. So oh uh, no, I watch them every every Monday morning when I'm eating my breakfast, <laughs> 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 okay. and I listen to your podcast while I'm at work. Okay, and <laughs> well your your check is in the mail. <laughs> oh no, no, it's it's actually something. It's nice to have something like that nowadays. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad to help, and uh, and there is no charge for that. So oh well, okay, good. All right, well listen, uh, you you've got your uh, you've got your um. Uh, probably the most interesting situation mm. developing over there. So mm. I'm going to wish you the best of luck and turn you loose, uh, hopefully for a relaxing evening and maybe even a few broken clay targets. Thanks for being on the Upland Nation podcast. All right. You guys have a great night. Thanks. Bye now. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's also living through a puppy right now, too, which uh, you might have surmised from all of that. And uh, if you are doing that right now, then uh, good luck to you. Just remember, puppies can do no wrong. And, and you know, uh, again, and, and soon enough, we'll have more from the monks of New Skeet as they have. Yes, the monks of New Skeet are going to be on the podcast very soon. So stand by for that. But in the meanwhile, just remember, uh, they've got some great advice about bringing puppies up. Their book is called The Art of Raising a Puppy. And um, it has a way different take on how to raise and train dogs and perhaps anything else you've seen out there you know you study enough of this stuff and you realize well ronnie and rick do that the smith cousins and then george hickox does that and evan graham does that and those are all kind of things from that but these guys have put it all together into one book and it is relevant i don't care whether you're a monk or an agility trial person, or a bird hunter with a bird dog. It's a great book, and you might want to take a look at it. Speaking of that kind of thing, bringing up dogs and training, I've got a bit of advice on that from our Cabela's podcast studio um, coming up in our Handle It segment. But in the meanwhile, hang on, and please give your attention to a couple brief commercial announcements, because... The reality is, without sponsors, uh, I couldn't do this. I couldn't afford to do this, and uh, we wouldn't have the Upland Nation podcast. Our first good friends are Dr. Tim's Performance Dog Food. And I'm not joking about These are people that I know and I work with and I believe in their products. And Dr. Tim Hunt is one of those guys. He's a veterinarian. He's a sled dog racer. The guy knows a little bit about performance from performance dogs. And just to make it good for you, Dr. Tim Hunt has uh, allowed you to take a 30% discount on your first order at drtims.com if you just use the code Upland Nation. Go to the website, learn about all the different formulas, whether you've got a working dog or a puppy or a couch potato. One of the things Tim has told me about are some of the functional ingredients in their formulas. And this is one, I, know, I always wondered why this was in here, but there is a an ingredient called porcine plasma porcine of course is pork plasma is a derivative uh, some of the some of the raw materials in blood and in a dog food that assists with the dog's immune system and gastrointestinal health all right learn more about all of that and get your 30% discount with the code Upland Nation by going to drtims.com, Dr. Tim's Performance Dog Food. And we've been talking a little bit about breaking clay targets. That's where I learned to appreciate electronic shooters protection. ESP America is Jack Homa's website, ESPAmerica.com. You know, uh, we've all put up with, you know, the little roll-up foam plugs or some other kind of thing with a tether on it. It doesn't matter. They're falling out or they're putting too much pressure on your ear because they're not custom fit. Now, whether you have it done at the Sportsman Show, which good luck on that, or at your local audiologist, and Jack will arrange for that, you should have custom fitted conforming perfectly to the shape of your ears hearing protection devices they rest in there gently securely so you can wear them on the range and in the field learn more about all of that shop all the choices and all the prices at espamerica.com
And from the Cabela's Podcast Studio, welcome back to the Upland Nation Podcast. This whole podcast is about good stuff, positives, all the things we can do right now, yes, to take advantage of the self-imposed or the gubernatorially imposed lockdown, if you will. One of the things I'm doing right now is getting my gear together, my training gear. If you're not already training, it's time. Wake up, smell the coffee, and get out there with your dog. I don't care how well developed your dog's skills are, there's always room for a tune-up. And there's always room for more stuff. Talked last week about building a uh, training table, woe table, whatever you want to call it. That's a good project shouldn't take more than a few hours if you can use power equipment without cutting off a finger here and there but here are some other things you might consider doing making check cords learn how to tie a bowline get a good latch one of those brass uh, clips if you will tie a bowline to it you can make check cords check cords out of virtually any kind of uh, rope i like a nice stiff rope that's light so that it doesn't wrap around all the stuff your dog is going to drag it through. Sometimes the best source is your um, hardware store or your sporting goods store where water ski rope seems to fit the bill quite often. You ever thought about making a backing dog silhouette? You know, an easy one out of plywood or something like that is a great idea if your dog is to that point. And then if you're so inclined, as everybody knows, no birds, no bird dog. Consider adapting something else or building from scratch a pigeon loft. Doesn't need to be fancy, but then you have your own training birds all the time right there. Good luck on all of that. Hope you do it. If you got any more suggestions about stuff to make when you're locked up in your own yard or anywhere else, well, send me a message on Facebook, either the Wing Shooting USA Facebook page or the Upland Nation Facebook page. And good luck. Be careful with that power equipment. All right. Speaking of pigeon lofts, on Facebook, Steve John says, I have an active pigeon loft. I don't know what that means. They're pretty quiet around our house, but once in a while, well, when the bobcat comes to visit, they get a little bit active, that's for sure. And when the Cooper's hawk perches, per, perches in the nearby aspen trees, yeah, they get really quiet. All right, anyway, Steve says, I plan to train solo quite a bit this spring until the virus passes. Yeah, this is even going to be an issue. I watched, watched a couple of folks hiking one of the trails out behind my house when I was running Flick this afternoon, and and... And they walked at at least they were at least six feet apart the whole time. And even when we stopped and chatted, they never got any closer to each other and they didn't get any closer to me. Probably a good idea, even in your training club, if your club is still meeting. Good luck on that. Steve's been doing a lot of obedience training in the basement. And oh, thank you, Steve. Also watching Wing Shooting USA. <laughs> I love it. Thanks so much. Okay, one of my favorite callers, uh, Lance Larson, Carver Extraordinaire. Uh, thanks for being on the program with us, Lance. Welcome to the Upland Nation podcast. Well, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Uh, you're down in Arizona, I think. And, uh, right. Uh, are you guys being hit up with the uh, mandatory lockdown and that sort of thing? Or where do you stand in that uh, whole world? Well, since I have uh, pretty much... Uh, do you know i do some contract work and i do well my um, uh, my own business uh it doesn't affect me that much uh as much as it could but uh they are they're shutting down everything i mean it's uh uh well all, all the things that got going with the professional sports teams and they're shutting uh shutting down any type of banquets around here you know as far as for uh money raising banquets almost every organization has shut down their banquet around here and things like that so it, as far as that's kind of stuff that affects me you know uh for four different groups that uh you know make their money and they've got to push push off their banquet or postpone it or you know cancel it completely that's terrible 
Yeah, you know, I, that's one of the unforeseen circumstances that nobody's really talked about yet. Thanks for bringing it up. If if you're a member of one of those groups and you normally do go to your banquet, well, they may or they may not reschedule it. So you might want to kind of renew your uh, your dues payment early or figure out another yeah. way to support them. But I'm going to dig into that. Thanks for the tip on that one, Lance. That's something that we ought to kind of be a little bit more mindful of. I got yeah, This is the time of year a lot of them start, you know, yeah. have their deal. So. <laughs> yeah, this this could be devastating. I know in our our own community, one of the local, in fact, a uh, uh, kind of a kids therapy center that uh, me and the rest of the Rotarians in our group uh, built, literally built a few years ago. Their their big fundraiser was the was supposed to be last Saturday night. And of course, you can't have that. So now they're going online with what will hopefully be a very successful version of their fundraising effort. But, you know, a lot of groups uh, haven't glommed onto that yet. So uh, if you're a member of something, ask around and find out how you can help everybody. Yes. Okay. You know, so from, from a practical standpoint, Lance, um, those gray ghost dogs years, um, are you finding dog food for them? Well, oh, yeah, I generally order yeah, in dog food. Yeah. I get it. So I, I was, when I said I ordered two months at a time, I was kind of making a joke because I could drive 40 miles to get it anyway. So I always wow. order two months. At a time. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> just to save the, save a little on gas. But uh, I don't know if that's going to be as so much fact as toilet paper is going to be for people. But uh, I have figured I put my boys first to make sure that they're going to have what they're going to need. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, speaking of that sort of thing, we, you know, uh, if you didn't know this yet, you're going to know it now. Amazon is basically resetting their priorities. If you're not buying what they define as an essential item, even your prime delivery is not overnight or second day. It's two weeks. So if that's how you buy your food or your dog uh, supplies of any sort, um, Amazon's doing it. It's probably only a matter of time before everybody else does. So uh, yeah. be mindful of that and plan ahead. Somebody earlier today said, uh, you know, I, I didn't need it yet, but I know I'm going to run out before I can get it on the regular delivery schedule. So I went out and bought some locally. Hey, that's not so bad a thing either. You know, uh, every local business can probably use a few more bucks in their pocket this time of uh, in this time of crisis. So uh, consider that yeah, as I mean, well. Worst case scenario, I can eat ramen, but boy, my boys get what the what they need. Yeah, yeah, their <laughs> their food is two bucks a pound. Mine is a buck forty nine. <laughs> on sale at the local Walmart. Um, yeah. So, so what are you doing with your dogs these days to cope with this wacky world? I'm walking them more. Yeah. It seems late. Yeah. Because uh, I'm not uh, don't have as many things planned on the weekends, but uh, I'm walking them more, doing a lot more tossing the bumpers in the backyard. Uh, uh, they're uh, just to get them something. I'm not. Uh, I decided I'm not going to be going to bark parks or anything in my neighborhood just because there's a lot of people there too. And let's just not push it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, I guess I was lucky that uh, my pointing dog club didn't cancel their fun trial this weekend, so that we we got that going for the pups. So we'll be able to go out and uh, hunt some quail. We do have, you know, and of course there's always that option of going to the uh, for little preserve we got close here for some quail. If we want to, because that so far is not closed. Wow. So, so, so in Arizona, at least where you live, uh, you're you still got a fun trial coming up, and you yeah. can hunt a preserve if you want to. I love it. Yeah. So there, it's there. There's not a lot of uh, you know, there's not a lot of it going on uh, for much longer because obviously it pretty much shut down, shuts down toward uh, end of March, beginning of April. All of them kind of shut down. Sure. Uh, here. Yeah. Because of the heat, uh, when it gets to be 110, nobody's going to be raising too many quail in this area of the state. Maybe up north in the Flagstaff area, but not down here, south of Phoenix, where it gets warm. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> I spent a week one night on a freeway on ramp trying to hitchhike to Flagstaff, but that's that's a story for another podcast. Down yeah, there. I can do that. <laughs> um, you know, you bring up a, a good point. Yeah. yeah um, if if you if there is yeah i mentioned on an earlier podcast this week this special edition i mentioned that a lot of clubs are saying we're going to play it day by day on on a field trial and a hunt test situation so if you're out there and you're planning to be on one especially if you're going to have to travel a long way or it's a big one like a really big one like in amo in 
Amo, Indiana, for the NASTRA folks. Um, mm-hmm. Stay in touch with NASTRA at the national level because it's going to change. I mean, they're going to have to at some point make that decision. And it's probably going to be made almost at the last minute. So uh, good luck on that. Um, anything else you might uh, you might think that you're um, that is kind of run of the mill for you that we might want to try? I, I talked about uh, like making stuff uh, for dog training, and um, you're a you're a maker. Uh, what are you doing to to get your dogs uh, trained up that might include uh, uh, happy hand kind of work? Well, I think I've I found I found that I'm really lucky uh, with my uh, younger dog that uh, he's not destructive with toys. So I've actually his toys uh, in the house, throwing things down the hall or backyard, are actual those docking bumpers, those uh, those uh, little those retrieving dummies. Sure. I mean, just to get them get them active. I mean, I'll just stand up like I'm doing just as I'm talking to you, and I throw throw a chucker bumper out the backyard and in he comes with it you know we're just having fun that way we just do it all the time i can't figure out any other way to get into retrieve better so it's just we're trying to do it all the time are you able to go to um any public ground and and actually run your dog or is there a restriction yet where you live uh oh yeah I, actually across the street from me i've got open areas great that uh that i can go the only thing is craziest thing here in arizona it's raising it's raining and raining for the past few days so it's just a uh we've got different kind of mud here basically this it's uh just sticks to your you put a you take about three or four steps in the mud and all of a sudden you're three inches taller because it just glues to the bottom of your feet you know we we used to call it gumbo in california down there it's it's more um yep. uh, that caliche soil is just clay exactly. yeah so uh yes so uh that's kind of out for at least a few days until it dries up (laughs) yeah you know because the other problem with that is it gets in between the toes on your dog and it takes forever to get out you know i found that um if if my dog is getting that stuff in between his toes the first thing he does when when we're done is he goes and and soaks his feet in the bathtub for about 10 minutes that gets most of it off before it has a chance to harden as long as i remember to do it yeah, exactly, because that hardens up just like it, it's like cement. Yeah, yeah, and then you're and then you're you're wrestling with the poor guy the whole time, and that's never any fun anyway. Well, and good. I, I get to do it. My dogs have been uh, are getting bored sometimes because uh, they're not doing enough. Just because I came home uh, about two weeks ago and found a uh, a dead morning dove in the hallway. Had to figure out, tried to question them to who who went and caught the morning dove and brought it in the house. Wow. Well, that was either a slow morning dove or a really quick uh, Weimaraner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know which. Yeah, well, um, you know, uh, just for the record, um, you didn't really find that. We don't want any federal employees with nothing better to do because they're furloughed to, to read into this anything that might oh, be. Oh, yeah, it was one of those European. Uh, yeah, yeah, collar. Yeah, 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 that's what it was. It was a yeah. Eurasian. Yeah, yeah. That, it had the band. Okay, no violation there. All right, good. <laughs> okay, and nobody really knows where you live yet, but they will. So uh, you're safe. Your secret is safe with us on the Upland Nation <laughs> podcast. Lance, great talking Thank with you. you. Um, uh, be safe out there, and and uh, good luck with your fun trial this weekend. Well, thanks a lot, Scott. Appreciate the call. You have a wonderful day. Thank you. Yeah, and speaking of uh, that country, there there was a place that I remember down in that area with green in the name. Uh, actually, that was down by Tucson now that I think about it. But anyway, um, uh, a post from Keith Coyle, the Green Acres Sportsman's Club in Roberts, Illinois. They're agonizing right now. They got the same issue that Lance alluded to. They're still going ahead with their event on Saturday. Um Brings up a couple good points, though. Um, keep hydrated, drink regularly, um, uh, be uh, considerate of others, especially if you're going to sneeze or something like that. Don't shake hands. Stay apart from each other. They'll never have more than 20 people maximum in their clubhouse uh, where he lives and where they're holding this event. It's not a big uh, violation yet. 
uh, 20 people is okay. Um, so um, good for them and good for everybody else who's going to be there. Good luck on that. I wish you the best and uh, yeah, be safe. Mm-hmm. And we have time for one more caller. And Paul, uh, you're, you're um, let's see, you're sheltering in place, but not your own place. Is that what I'm reading into this? Yeah, I'm in transit. We uh, had a wedding reception for my son in Richmond, Virginia. And uh, instead of flying back in a little tube, uh, we decided to rent a car, which might be a little healthier. So we stopped in Ohio to visit my sister. And from here, we're going to Chicago to do the last leg up to Ironwood, Michigan and Hurley, Wisconsin. Well, be safe out there, but I think you made a good decision. Yeah. You know, it's funny. All, all the folks I know who are traveling by air are telling me that it's uh, it's it's a ghost town once you get into the airplane, but the airports <laughs> are crazy. Heard the wackiest report from Palm Springs Airport today where all the Canadians are fleeing before the border closes. So uh, oh, yeah. plan ahead. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, uh, once once I get home, it'll be a lot quieter and much more comfortable. Uh, and that's the whole idea. Um, mm -hmm. wh where you've been, where you're headed, or where you will end up, are there any mandatory restrictions on where you can go, how you can travel, uh, who you can socialize with, or anything like that? Not that I'm aware of. We're going to travel through O'Hare, but... The plane we're going to go on is an eight-seater, so it, uh, I don't think we'll have to worry too much about contagion because it'll be a pretty small flight uh, going back up to our hometown. Yeah, I remember those well back in the day when I was first in the TV business. We called them flying culverts. <laughs> I, I'll, rem I'll never forget being bumped off uh, off one of those going from uh, Minneapolis to some tiny town in South Dakota because uh when the wind got too strong they had to they had to abandon half the seats so that the pilot could still keep the plane under control oh yeah uh, i shouldn't say those kind of things when you're going to get on one but uh, here we are so um yeah. so we're talking about all the uh, the semi bright sides of all of this if if we can't mm -hmm. do all the things we usually do what can we do with our dog and regarding bird hunting and bird dogs that, uh, that might be worth, uh, you know, doing, what are you doing? <laughs> well, once I get home, I'm going to head out to our lake house and, uh, start tapping trees, maple trees to make maple syrup. And, uh, my dog Sadie is right alongside of me and she, uh, kind of walks, uh, sometimes floundering through the heavy snow. It couldn't be anywhere from, two feet to three feet of snow left on the ground yet so wow. um, i'll be using my snowshoes and sadie will be following in my tracks and what what kind of breed is she again she's a german wire hair pointer okay great well if any dog could do it that's the one good for you uh, yeah you know, she's got a lot of sisu yeah whatever that means <laughs> okay come on now you got to tell us <laughs> that's a finnish word for uh guts integrity determination uh stubbornness so um it's one of the few fin words that makes it into the u.s language how do i spell that because that's going into the program notes s-i-s-u oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you all right oh, sure. uh, all right so um besides uh making maple circle uh, mm. what, what else can you do with your dog? That's more kind of bird dog and bird hunting oriented. Can you do any training out there? Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, somewhat limited because we still have a lot of snow on the ground and it's turning into the mud season. So, mm. you know, I'll, I'll take her out for long walks and we'll work on hand signals and, uh, you know, just coming back on command. Great. Uh, she's going to be 12 this spring. So, She's pretty much got everything down to where I'm comfortable with it. But, yeah, reinforcing all the basic controls and signals is what we usually do. You know, that's a great idea. I was doing that with Flick this afternoon on, on a retrieve or two, and I, I'm trying mm -hmm. to not burn him out. But, you know, there's mm -hmm. if we thought about it, if we made a list of all the commands that we expect our dog to follow uh, mm -hmm. and, and do one of those every day, 
one each of those every day, we, we'd probably keep our dogs in pretty good shape and we'd be in better shape too. So yeah, thanks for the reminder on that. Good. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the idea is just to keep walking. You know, the, we go for walks every day, like three times a day because uh, it's good for me. It's good for her. And um, you know, it just keeps the mind sharp too. Sure. They say if your dog's fat, you need more exercise. <laughs> Well, good, exactly. and uh, and best of luck getting all the way home. It's uh, as you well know, it's wacky time to be traveling anywhere for any reason. So be safe. Yeah, we live in interesting times, as the Chinese proverb goes. <laughs> and good right. luck on that. Thanks a lot for being on the Upland Nation, Paul. Well, thank you much. I always enjoy talking. Thank you. And that's the understatement of the week. Interesting times. Uh, best of luck to everybody on that. Hey, still got the This Land is Your Land feature coming up here on the Upland Nation podcast. My name is Scott Linden. I'm your host, facilitator, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, cheerleader as well. So uh, whatever you're doing out there, uh, do it with your dog. Uh, Make sure that you uh, uh, are safe in whatever way you define safe. And uh, for the most part, make sure you follow all the rules uh, because in the long run, We'll all get out of this mess a little bit sooner if we keep the risk low. No risk involved. In fact, that's the whole idea behind a Gunner kennel. Gunner makes the highest quality dog crates I have ever seen. Gunner.com is where you learn more about them. Watch some of the videos there. You will not freaking believe what they have done to punish these kennels just to show you how strong they are. Congratulations to all the winners of the recent photo contest at Gunner.com. You know, a Gunner kennel has over 125 components in it. Every one of them well thought out by the folks there at Gunner Kennels, and that's why it has a lifetime warranty. That's how much they believe in the product. If you don't believe me, well, go learn more at Gunner.com. And don't forget... Even in these times, they're doing their best to help you out. One way, they're offering financing now on a Gunner Kennel. Learn more at Gunner.com. Speaking of savings and money matters, at Dogtra.com, take 10% off anything over 200 bucks and get free shipping on anything over 200 bucks with the clue SLUN10. S-L-U-N-10 will get you 10% off at Dogtra.com on any product, including their T&B Dual Collar. T&B Dual is my training collar of choice. Right now I'm using it on Flick, and it seems to be doing the job. One of the things I like most about it, the battery life is unbelievable. And if you like that vibration feature, One of the best parts about this TNB Dual is the vibration is a little bit more robust than all the other collars I've used over the years. Learn more about all of that and more and get in on the March bundle deals on many collars at D-O-G-T-R-A dot com. All right, time for our This Land is Your Land segment, uh, brought to you by my new website, findbirdhuntingspots.com, where in bits and pieces you're getting a taste of uh, my whole fall hunting season, which was all public land, all wild birds, all places I'd not ever been before. Sound like a dream? Well, it was, and you'll go to the website, findbirdhuntingspots.com, to get pieces of that adventure here and there in the meanwhile though another article from the website that you might enjoy 13 tips to make your life easier all right many of them are travel oriented or for places you go that might be handy once you get there one of them taught just this year on that trip by a buckaroo down in southeast oregon who has become a good friend since then and a hunting partner as well you know those wire gates the barbed wire gates three strands across and a upright post on each side and one of the posts is hammered into the ground the other one is kind of loose but it's held by a a kind of a, a a loop of really stiff wire 
Sometimes those are a little bit hard to open because the tension on that upright post that moves is so great. Well, the first thing David told me when we got to that gate was the reason they make them that tight is because the boss, in this case the cow boss, really thinks it's important to have a tight gate. And I understand that. They're supposed to be cow proof, and that's one way to do it. If you cannot get that thing pried loose from under that wire loop, then the first thing you got to do is go to the middle of that thing, put on your leather gloves, and hold on to the top strand. Lean back and try and put some stretch into the top strand of that gate by pulling from the middle. All right, once you've done that, go back and try again. Put your shoulder into that upright post, and with any luck, that wire loop should loosen up enough to push up and over the top of that post. Good luck getting it back in. But now it's a little bit more stretched and it might make life slightly better for you. All right, here's my last chance to remind you that you will get custom fitted highest quality digital hearing protection devices at ESPAmerica.com. Jack Homa is my friend and my 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 supplier of hearing product protection devices. And he has done a great job of making them affordable for everybody. Remember. Hearing loss is cumulative. You can't get it back. I don't care what magic potion you drink or what kind of pills you swallow. It's gone forever. Protect it before it is. ESPAmerica.com. Well, that's it for the Upland Nation for now. Thank you for paying attention. Hope we were able to brighten up your day and your week and your whole in ordeal over this COVID-19 thing. If you enjoyed the show, I would appreciate your telling your friends. And more importantly, I would appreciate a five-star rating wherever you get your podcasts, especially if it's Apple Podcasts. You can always learn more about the podcast and what else is going on in the Upland Nation at Upland Nation's Facebook page or at the Wing Shooting USA Facebook page. Get all of the back archived editions of the Upland Nation podcast at uplandnation.com. You can leave me a message at any of those places or also at my website, findbirdhuntingspots.com. It may be a tough time for a whole bunch of reasons, but it's also a great time to reacquaint yourself with your family, your friends, and of course, your bird dog. Practice safe hygiene, wash your hands, stay six feet apart, except with those you love and trust, and enjoy the time together. You will regret it if you don't. Thanks. See you in the field.